Welcome to Engine Room. This is Engine Room Audio in New York City. I'm gonna give you the nickel tour. Have your nickels ready. Uh, Engine Room Audio is a, a full service audio company. Um, we do mastering, we do recording, we do manufacturing. Uh, this is our new uh, New York location. Um, we've been in New York for about 15 years, but we've only been in this spot for probably the last last year. And actually, uh, some of the space is still under construction. We're just finishing some of the stuff upstairs, which you'll see. Um, we do a lot of CD manufacturing. This is our manufacturing office. Uh, we do a lot of manufacturing for a lot of local uh, bands, a lot of uh, management companies, all the way up to huge corporations. We did like three million copies for American Express a couple weeks ago. Um, and you know, some big labels, we do a lot of promo copies and that kind of stuff. So that's what goes on in there. Uh, Engine Room Recordings is a uh, small record company that uh, functions out of Engine Room Audio. Um, we've got a, a number of artists, sort of mostly singer-songwriters. Um, we Our most recent release is Tracy Bonham. You may remember her. She had a hit mother, I don't know, last decade, I guess, but went gold. Uh, the new record's doing really well. She was on The Tonight Show recently. Um, big feature on NPR, so that's going really well for us, but uh, that's what goes on in there. Um, this is my office. Uh, I'm a guitar player, so you can see the guitars there. Um, got a few of the recent projects. We just got this plaque in last week. We, this was for last year's Trey Songs record. Um, we just finished the new one, which is actually on the charts right now. And I think the new one has actually already gone gold. So we're happy about that, obviously. Up on the mezzanine level, we've got uh, our SSL room. We did a lot of research trying to find the exact perfect console for us. But um, this one turned out to be the one. This We're only the second owners of this. It's a uh, came out of the Franklin House, or actually the Bennett House in Franklin, Tennessee. Um, and it was an 80 channel, but we cut it down to 64 just because it wouldn't fit. <laughs> they say there have been more hits mixed on the 4000 series SSL console than all other consoles in history combined. So that's a pretty good recommendation, I guess. <laughs> I've always been a real fan of the, of the Dines. Um, I had the BM15s in our old mix room at our old location. And uh, just, you know, we really liked them a lot and felt like when we, when we built this room, we wanted to go with, with, a, uh, with a Dine speaker for the, uh, for the, for the far fields or the midfields, mm -hmm. you know. And this just felt like the right thing to do. And, you know, they've been great in the space. I mean, everyone, you know, thinks the room is amazing sounding. This is this is the live room here, and we uh, when we when we chose this space, you know, one of the one of the big uh, things we were looking for was ceiling height. You know, it's really difficult in New York City to um, get big rooms, and you know, we were we were looking obviously for the biggest room we could we could afford, but also wanted to make sure we had a lot of ceiling height, and uh, we were luckily able to kind of pull that off with this space. You know, at the apex of the of the uh, ceiling there, I think it's almost 30 feet. I think it's 28 or 29 up there. When we designed the space, we were really uh, trying to make sure that we could get good lines of sight um, between all of the booths and the producer and everything, um, which I think we pretty much achieved, you know. Um, this worked out pretty well. This room's a little bit of a mess right now. There was a, a Ryan Leslie session over the weekend. He was actually working with uh, Jasmine Villegas, who's a uh, new signing on, uh, I think she's on Sony, right? But they, they think she's going to be the next Beyonce. She's actually on tour right now with Justin Bieber. And then we have downstairs, we have the production room level, which uh, I can show you, which is also where the mastering room is. Um, we'll head that way now. So this will give you an idea what these rooms look like. They're all, you know, it's all uh, floated floors. Uh, they're acoustically tuned, you know, uh, to some extent. Um, they've all got booths in them. Um, so the guys can do, you know, a fair amount of work in here. And, I mean, there's actually been some pretty big records, actually, that have been cut, actually, right in this room. We had uh, Talib Kweli was in here. Um, we had High Tech in here working uh, with Talib, do, you know, doing some of the Reflection Eternal stuff that just came out. Um, some of the Wu-Tang guys actually have tracked in here, in this room. So they're nice, st they're nice spaces. Um, and, you know, a lot of times they'll do tracking down here or editing down here and then move upstairs to do mixing or if they've got larger uh, sessions that need to happen, they'll move upstairs. So down this hallway, just kind of, uh, there are more of those production spaces. Um, this, this room belongs to DJ Cassidy. 
I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's a pretty famous DJ guy, and uh, he's actually all over the television right now with his BlackBerry ads and stuff. Um, one of these rooms at the end, uh, essentially, is a couple of guys from Universal that have a, a production space in there. And then this is Victor Mancuso. He's a, he's a pretty well-known uh, vocal producer and has worked with a lot of, you know, Beyonce and, and those kinds of people. Um, he's got a nice big booth in his room, and they do a lot of vocal sessions in there, and they do really well. Um, this space right here, this is actually the mastering lab, which we can step into next. Uh, like, a, like a lot of this place, this room is actually only about 95% finished. Um, we had a, a custom uh, mastering speaker rig built by uh, Fran Manzella, who uh, he's, he's like one of the best acoustician uh, guys pretty much in the, I think, in the world. I mean, he designed Sterling Sound. Um, and he's co-owner of this company called Griffin that does custom monitoring. Um, we had him build this system specifically for this room. And uh, we're actually only about halfway through the, the tuning process. Uh, the room was pretty well tuned before we had those speakers in, but there's a lot that he's having us do to the room just to sort of get that ultimate last step of perfection, you know? So we've got some Helmholtz resonators that are gonna go up in here in the sides. Um, and once those decisions are made, we're actually, we have custom furniture and stuff that actually is going to go in here, but we, we don't want to actually finalize that until we know exactly where the mastering console is going, and we're not going to know exactly where that's going until uh, Fran finishes his work um, with these speakers. So the room, I mean, the room is a, it's a functioning room. I mean, I think so far this year we've got three platinum and four gold records out of here. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very accurate space. Um, but the work that Fran is doing is, is to make it, you know, taking it from super ultra tweak head to super ultra ridiculous tweak head. A, a mastering engineer really needs to understand his room and he really needs to understand his speakers. What you need to have is, a, is, is an amazingly accurate system and then you need to have, uh, you know, an amazingly accurate understanding of your amazingly accurate system. Um, you know, in a mix environment, it makes total sense to be switching between speakers. But in a mastering environment, what you want to try to do is to create a pristine, accurate listening environment that you have a very thorough understanding of so that you can do the work of a mastering engineer. And if you're switching between speaker systems, to me, you know, I'm sure there are guys that are good that, that, that do that, but I think that if you were to look at the mastering rooms of most of the heavyweight guys, you'd find that they've got one set of speakers that they understand very thoroughly. You've seen pretty much the whole place, you know, all of these walls, one thing I didn't mention is the construction of the facility, and every single one of these walls on, on, on every side is triple sheetrock. Obviously, you can see that we've got the step up to every single one of the audio suites, so every single one of the, of the spaces has floated floors. We've got a completely separate structure with triple rock on either side. Um, you can see, you know, some of the orange clouds are kind of like the stop buttons, you know, on a, on a CD player, and we've got, like, down the hallway here, we've got a lot of triangles and that kind of stuff, which is sort of referencing like fast forward or whatever, you know, just so when audio people are walking around in the space, they uh, see uh, some of the iconography that they're familiar with. <laughs> Make them feel right at home. <laughs> well, that's the facility. You've seen pretty much all there is to see here at Engine Room Audio. Um, thanks for stopping by.